Welcome to season three of the Iceman Kicking Podcast. My name is Brett Arkellian. Kick your feet up, relax, and enjoy this episode of the Iceman Kicking Podcast. They call me the I think in a way we kind of welcome the struggle part. We like the struggle part sometimes. We don't like seeing kids struggle, but at the same time, it's just an opportunity for them to elevate that game. Welcome specialists, coaches, dads of kickers, moms of punters, relatives of long snappers, and dogs that shy kickoffs to the Iceman Kicking Podcast. It's the show with cold questions and even cooler guests. And I'm your host today, Brett Arkellian, and I'm very excited because I'm joined by two coaches who are just as passionate, if not more, about kickers and specialists as I am. Coach Zendejas is Alex Sr. and Alex Jr. Uh, Coach Alex Sr. had the opportunity to play Football, he received a scholarship from USC. He's grown and taught uh, kids across the Arizona and California areas for the last 20, probably more than that, right, Coach? More than 20 years? Yeah. More than Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Alex Jr., who played at the University of Arizona, spent some time playing arena ball and also, also coaches specialists. Guys, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for having us. Yeah, man, I, I am fired up. I mean, you guys have had some – you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll list some of the specialists. You've had Dom uh, Dom Vada from Arkansas State, Marlon Hawk from Mississippi State, Jackson Garcia from the University of San Diego, and Becca Longo, who is the first female to receive a uh, scholarship uh, to play football. Uh, Alex, can you talk a little bit about that? We were briefly talking about it before. Uh, just what that meant to you and seeing her journey and all the work she put in. I'll tell you, Becca, man, it was amazing working with that girl. Anything we asked of, and, I mean, she would come come to the facility, train hard, work hard. You know, the, the, the best part about the host, like we were talking earlier, is I was able to see those Division One kicks. You know, I was able to see those great practices. Yes, bad practices, great kicks, bad kicks, all that came along with it. But the most important part for me that I would always tell her is, one of the main things I look for is I look for that. Do you, does she have it? Does the kid have it? And she had it. It just, I, all I was looking for is we need these kind of kicks to happen when you're with the program, when you're with your team, with your, when you're at Adam state, when you're in front of your head coach, because with me, I have it. I know that's why, that's why it's my, it's real encouraging for me to make sure that, that we continue to practice this way because I, I want the, I want, we always want the best for our kickers. And I always wanted the best for her. I just, whatever happened when she was playing happened. But the best part about the whole situation about working with Becca is that I, I knew she had a lot of potential. And and I, I got to see it. And that, that was to me, it's always going to stay with me. And I always used to tell her that, you know, when you see those kicks, that's that that's when I know that person, it's it's in them and they want it. So it was it was a it was a great thing to see. Yeah, and it is too. I mean. As we talked about, a coach's job is to show a kid or an athlete the potential that they have, and you did that. And also for her to show every other girl out there that wants to play football that they can do it, and not only just do it and be on a team, but actually play at a high level and compete and beat out some of these boys. I agree. And she was, she was. It seems like. Seems like once she stopped, now that she's not kicking, it's like we we probably have about four, five, or six girls that are kicking now. So I we're seeing a lot of the girls now, you know, coming out and wanting to kick field goals and kick off. Especially now in Arizona, they have that new flag um, high school now that they're part of. So now they're kicking field goals, they're kicking extra points, they're kicking kickoffs, they're punting. So they're you know, girls are girls are out there now and they're getting involved. So, and I, and I love to see that because I'll tell you what, the best part about girls sometimes is sometimes they, sometimes I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say sometimes they work a little bit harder than the kids, Absolutely. And whether it's in the weight room or not, and they want it a little bit more. So, so to some of these guys that say these girls are just girls. No, man, they, they want to play the sport and I'm okay with that. We're okay with that. And because they, they actually push some of these kids over you know to 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 come out and put in a little bit more work and a little bit harder work and and work at it so yeah. i love it i love it you know it's cool that you said that i also heard the same or similar thing uh coach lonnie drayton shout out to coach drayton at 
Smyrna High School. I taught high school for two years in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And he coached men's basketball for a long time. Uh, had a daughter, though, and he ended up coaching women's basketball and softball. And I said, what's the major difference, coach, like in coaching those two different? He goes, dude, these girls want to work so much harder than the guys. I mean, they will do anything that you tell them. There's no attitude here. There's no, oh, well, my dad said do it like this. No, they'll drop whatever they're doing, and they're going to go and execute it. And he goes, I love it. I want to trade it. And I'm sure that's the exact same thing that you guys have seen. Yes. Yes, it is. It is. It that's is. awesome. Now, Alex, you know, I got a question for you. I, I didn't forget, man. I, I do have to ask the uh, two of the, the you know, most special uh, guys that you worked with or you guys have both worked with is Marquette King and my boy Matt Carrizosa, who's also a friend of the podcast. And Matt's playing the game right now. But tell me a little bit what it's like about, you know, how would you guys get in contact with these guys and what is it like working with these professional athletes? Oh, Mac, Mac has a, I mean, I think the relationship that we've built with Mac is, is pretty special. Um, you know, it, it sounds weird, but it started through a DM, you know, I messaged him. I found out he was, <laughs> most things out, do nowadays. <laughs> I found out he was living here in Arizona. So I shot him a message. Um, he came by the facility, tried to work out, out, you know, fast forward two, three years. I mean, you know, he was coming three times a week, like clockwork. Um, and I think that's a good thing about the facilities. We're able to see these guys multiple times during the week. And, you know, like, I guess any coach's relationship with the player, the more you see them, the more you get to know them, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, you know, Mac, his family, his brothers, you know, it, it's just, it just builds a special relationship to where a couple of weeks ago, you know, we were able to go out there and watch Marquette and Mac play each other and, you know, it's, it's kind of an opportunity for us. Uh, you know, we're always going to be coaches and always going to want to critique and look and, you know, give them feedback after, but it's also an opportunity for us to just go out there and kind of just be fans for a day where you know how much work they put in in the off season in the facility, you know, when nobody's watching. So now when you, when you're in the stands, you see the, the environment, the atmosphere, and you're kind of just able to watch them and enjoy it. I mean, I think it's special. Um, Marquette, I mean, I know seniors done a lot with Marquette as well. Um, but I think I don't I don't know how I think Simon Laera kind of introduced us to Marquette and you know, we met Destroying through him as well. And, you know, Marquette, as senior said earlier, Marquette's just that, that's an NFL guy right there, man. That's that, that's just who he is. I mean, nobody's gonna change Marquette. Marquette's Marquette, and I think that's the that's the thing that we've kind of realized through him is just you know, you just got to let him be him. You got to let him be him, do what he does. And that guy is one hell of a punter. Yeah, he's amazing to watch. And and you kind of said it too, huh, Senior? You're saying, you know, I'm essentially another pair of eyes for him. I'm not going to change what he does. Is that right? I would never do that. I That's, you know, and that's one of the things. Once we met, once we kicked with, when we kicked with these these um, professional athletes, and that's everybody professional athletes in my in our book you know they could be but when we worked with Marquette the first time we met him it from there on it was go it was it was an amazing relationship relationship meaning that you know we're there for each other and stuff like that and we're there to help we're here to help you I'm not here to change you Be honest. you know I'm I'm here to guide you I'm here to what what do we got to do to warm up here I can put my input here and there and then what do you think here so it's a communicating kind of thing but it's not a thing where I'm trying to change your style because I would never do that to a guy that has a leg like him. His personality, man, I love it. And, you know, anybody that wouldn't love that excitement, there's something wrong because he doesn't mean harm in no way. He's just, that's who he is. He's he's a real fun, loving guy that all he wants to do is be happy about what he does. And he wants to, he wants to inspire kids. He wants to inspire who's ever watching him to go out and chase their dream and do it do it on um, do it do it the best of their ability having fun doing it so how, how how can you take fun away from kicking or punting or snapping you can't because it has to be fun you I, i'm i'll be honest it's it's a position that you better have fun out of it. it's not because kicking the way we were brought up the first thing coaches would tell us is go kick against that backstop over there go yeah. <laughs> throw us away from everybody they never included us with nobody. So, so what Marquette brings to the table, he, even if I seen, I was watching him at the XFL game, man, 
he's in tune, man. He's having a ball. He's having, I, you know, even when I watch him on TV and stuff, I love his character. You know, yes, some coaches aren't going to like it, but you know what? If he's doing his job, let him do his job. If he's not doing his job, then there's consequences. But if you're doing your job, just leave him alone. There's no, there's no ego thing with us, you know? So, so I think that's what comes into play with certain coaches. They probably, they probably want things done their way. Well, you know, that's, I, I think that's, that's only good in the maybe Pop Warner, maybe high school, you know, some in high school because they're going through the learning phase. But once they get into a Division One school um, or, or college or whatever, there still can be some, some, some coaching, not very much. But when you're in the NFL thing, yes, there's can be coaching, but I think it's more the mental mental coaching that needs that these kids need because these kids, they got big legs, you know. I, I'm still trying to wonder why, you know, and it's just me saying this because if you're coming out as a top college D1 kicker going into the NFL, there's no reason to change anything. You're kicking in front of 100,000 people in college. You're going to kick in front of the same fans. Except the only difference, now you get paid. So yeah. that's just a thing. I mean, so where the struggle comes, I think it comes from being out there too much with too many different people, too many voices, too many, too much this, too much this. When all you really got to do is focus, fo focus on what you have to do. I have a saying that we say here is, um, you know, nobody knows, nobody's gonna, nobody knows me better than I do. I know me. I know when I hit a good ball. I know how to hit a good ball. If I hit a bad ball, I know I hit a bad ball. So I think that's one of the things that I think as a as a as a kicker or long snapper, you know yourself. You know what you're capable of doing. You just got to be okay. And yes, okay, coach. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do this. But I've been doing this so long. You know, everybody. Uh, the way I look at it, the moment you miss, or the moment you give a bad snap, or the moment you punt a bad ball everybody's going to chime in and going to tell you, you did something wrong. Okay, coach. Well, let me, let me, let me hit this ball now. So they hit it, have a great ball. There you go. You're on to the, you're on to doing the same thing you were doing. So let's, let's be a little bit more patient. Let's understand we're going to struggle a little bit. Let's understand we're going to miss field goals. Let's understand we're going to miss punts or snaps, but we're going to get it right back on the next one. So that's kind of like what we talk about, what we, what we kind of train and we kind of go by and stuff at the end. Man. Yeah. That's really well said. I feel like I'm listening to my wise uncle, you know, or my wise uh, Tio there, but no, I, I, I really agree with a lot of that stuff. You say, we have a saying too, that we say simplify and amplify, you know, simplify and amplify. So just like you're saying, I, we had a situation. I just had, uh, our, our kicker, uh, Isaiah Gomez on the podcast. And he, he did a great job. He ended the season 15 for 15, but when he started out three for nine, everyone's freaking out. Right. And he was all conference preseason, all conference, all these accolades, but every coach in the room wanted to say, Oh, he doesn't look the same. Oh, he's got this going on. He's got that going on. And in my head, I'm thinking, shut your mouth. He's going <laughs> to do, he's going to do what he does and he's going to figure it out. And I'm going to be there for him. I like to say, just like Randy Brown, I'm a golf caddy. You know I mean, yes. I sit in the back. I If he asks me questions, I'll give some input. But that's something I've learned. And, and definitely you guys take that approach, I can see, um, yes. when dealing with your specialists. Yes. yes. So talk a little bit, <clears throat> Junior, about your path. And, and we kind of hit on it a little bit. And you can kind of incorporate your whole family's path. Um, obviously, originally from Mexico. But talk about, you know, kind of briefly your upbringing and, and getting into kicking all that. Yeah, so the family obviously has a, a long line in in the kicking world, and you know my uncles, my dad. Um, I remember some of the first, I guess some of the first memories I have as far as the whole football scene was with my uncle Louise when he was playing with Arizona Rattlers. You know, he'd take us onto the field pregame, and you know, just being out there, it's kind of like the first time you fall in love with something. Um, but then continued playing soccer. Once high school came around, I didn't start kicking till freshman year of high school. Uh, went to Ironwood High School out here in Glendale you know, was blessed enough to get a full ride after high school and go to the University of Arizona where, you know, I've had my ups and downs playing. Um, but I think I, I definitely wouldn't change anything. And I, I think, you know, when you when you go through things and bounce back, you learn, you're able to learn from that stuff. So now whatever I experienced through my own playing career, 
now I'm kind of able to see these high school kids and where they're at, whether they're on a high, like kind of like you just talked about, about your kicker there, you know, you're going to have the ups and the downs of the whole season where there's nothing like kicking with confidence. And then there's nothing like kicking where, man, it's like, you know, what, what is it? And it's nothing. It's just settling down, get back to your swing, trust yourself, get that confidence. So, you know, being able to go through all that stuff in college and playing, I mean, I think, you know, senior and, and myself, we, we talk a lot about it here. It's, you know, we don't coach from a book. We, we coach from experience. Like a lot of the things that we see, you know, we've been through it. We're not, we're not just talking just to talk or we're not just making stuff up and say, Hey, you know what? This is like this, this is like this. No, we've been through the things to where, you know, we could relate with the kids. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is, like you said, we, we know how, how it feels to hit, you know, game winners we know how it feels to miss game winners we know we know all the emotions behind it so now that we're able to see a lot of these high school kids and young kids I mean you know we hope hopefully that we could kind of speak that into them early so you know later on throughout their careers it's going to happen where you're going to miss you're going to miss some kicks you're going to make some kicks but you know hopefully we plant into them how to respond to these things yeah um, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously what my family has done, you know, for my uncles in the past, it's, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing journey. And we always say it could be a, it could be a crazy book um, if that ever kind of came into play. But you know, it, it's just a lot of, I guess, just really blessed, to be honest. Yeah. Really I, have, I have a question for you, too. You talked a little bit on the ups and downs of your career, you know, when you're playing. So can you tell me what was one way you, you, hoped with that or, or you know one way you got out of when you were in a tough space and can you give me an example of a time where you know you're down you're able to pick yourself up or what worked for you and so I mean biggest I guess the biggest downfall for me was my junior year you know ended up having a horrible game missed some extra points that cost us a game um and at the time I'll be honest I didn't bounce back as quick as I wanted to bounce back but you know after some time and, you know, not getting over the hump of doubting yourself. Once you kind of get over that and you kind of just, okay, I've been doing this for five, six years. I've had plenty of kicks under my belt. Stop listening to everybody that chimes in and has an opinion once something goes wrong. And I think, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, I probably made that mistake at the time is, you know, you, you have one bad game or you have one bad kick and all of a sudden everybody's a kicking expert. Um, everybody has a mic in front of you. Everybody's, you know, putting their two cents in. So, you know, at the time, shame on me for, for listening and, and getting to that point. But, you know, after a while, you're like, you block everything out. You shut out the noise. You're like, I ain't listening to them. I'm trusting what's, what's gotten me here. And once you're able to kind of get back to that and get back to the basic and then just kind of like what senior said about Marquette, man, the guy loves kicking. And once you get back to doing that, it doesn't matter, you know, the highs and lows. You know, we have another guy that's, that we've been working with recently, Shane um, McKinley. I, sorry, I probably messed up his last name, but we call him the lad. Um, oh, yeah, you know, he's an he, Irish guy, right? He's an Irish guy, man. We just love this guy's attitude <laughs> because nothing phases this guy. And, you know, he could bomb a 60-yard field goal, and, yeah, he pumped up about it, but he's good, you know maybe his next kick's not as bad or not as good, but this guy just has this energy about him and this, you know, kind of this, this personality about him where I don't think it phases him. And I think that's the way, you know, some of these kickers should approach the game where, you know, you're out there, you're enjoy you're doing something you love. So it, it doesn't matter the outcome as long as you're out there doing, it matters the outcome. But what I'm trying to say is you're, you love doing it. So you're going to keep coming back to it. Fall in um, love with the process and not the result, right? Exactly. Just loves it. And I know, you know, with our group this morning, one of the things we kind of talked about after, you know, we like getting the guys together and kind of having a little group talk. Um, but another one of the big things is, you know, when you when you have your, we brought up this illustration earlier, when you have your tennis shoes on, you're off the field stuff, you leave the field to where it is. Once you put your cleats on, all right, your game mode, you got to turn the switch on. But again, once you take those cleats off, leave it on the field, go enjoy your day, go about your day. We got a lot of high school kids. So, you know, the message was once you put your tennis shoes on, good or bad day, go enjoy the day, go enjoy your weekend. 
come Monday, we'll get right back to work. Whether you had a good day today or a bad day today, that's all the journey. That's all the, the all part of the process. Yeah. Um, so just, just a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, like I said, I, I don't think anybody has the, the perfect backstory or the, I don't think everybody gets it right the first time. So sometimes I messed up along my journey, but I think now it helps me kind of with these younger kids, um, you know, hopefully you could kind of speak into them through the experience and being able to relate. And I think, I think that's a big, a big key for us here. Well, I, I think that's exactly it. Right. Is like, you had to go through those things to make you into the coach that you are and make you the successful coach you are now. Um, and it's, and it's kind of funny too, senior, what you were saying about, um, you know, Marquette and them enjoying, you know, I've talked to a few NFL coaches and they say like, even the league now is changing. Like you can't be this. And you know, you've seen urban Meyer or Nick Saban come in the NFL and it just didn't work with them because they're used to the dictatorship or, you know, the full control, the authoritarian style of coaching that doesn't fly in the NFL. They will tell you your face, like, stop talking to me, get out of my face. You got to kind of let them enjoy that experience because like you said, there's a lot of, especially with kicking, there's a lot of stresses and a lot of tough things going on. You talk a little bit about Alex senior, about the, you know, Mac, one of the things he said was that you guys are so good about coaching the mental game you know how do you teach your guys to block out distractions i think one of the i i I think one of the key things for us is and when i say this you know we got we got we understand that we know the mental game starts real young and you know that's not something for i think that's in your upbringing that's in how your parents are raising you you, by the time you you want to become a kicker, you've already established your mental game. You either have it or you don't have it. But one of the things that you can learn is you can learn from your faults. You can learn from your mistakes. You can learn from your misses. You know, it's not getting down. It's body language. It's not, it's, it's we ain't going to feel sorry for you. We're, we want you to, the, you miss the ball. You're going to miss a field goal. Make, let's make the next one because you know how. So I think more importantly for us, we understand when we have parents say, well, you can be tough on them. No, that's not how we do it. That's not our job. We're not the parent. We're the coaches here. You know, even though we want to be a part of their, their, uh, their, their journey, but we want to help them. We don't want to hurt them. Meaning. So pretty much it all comes down to, they've already been developed. You know, one of my a real famous soccer coach from here once told me is um, you either got it. The age for soccer is 16 years old. 15, 16 years old, if you either have it at 15 or 16, or you're not going to have it. That's just what it is. You've already been brought up. However you've been brought up, you either have it or you don't. So I think the mental part of the game, the mental part of the game is learning from your mistakes. And that's what we do best here is we get these kids and we work on the foundation. We work on the fundamentals. We work on the little things that nobody works on. We work on, on tempo, contact you know, making sure you're going through the ball. We don't care about the uprights because the uprights are no good to you when you're not focusing on your contact, on your tempo. So that's why our facility works so great because we make we bring them into a little environment where they're able to snap, um, snap, kick, punt, and really focus on your drop, your release, your contact, your tempo, and you take them out to the field, some you lose a lot of kids because all they're worried about is that field goal pole, the distance. Well, that doesn't really mean nothing to anybody if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing by in the in the little square that is 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 your is your spot. So the mental game to us is not trashing down on people, not not um not um discouraging them we have every i believe that a great coach has to coach every kid individually i believe that you don't coach them all the same some kids are some kids need a pat on the back some people need to be disciplined some people need this some people need to be stopped from messing around so that's just that's the part of the coaching as a coach we we have to know our kids and we have to know him know them individually because we're all different None of us are one. None of us are alike. I'm yet to meet a, um, five kickers that are the same style. Everybody has their own little form, their own little style, their own little um, thing. 
work on us as coaches. It's our job to put them in the best place for their 12 and a half shoe that they have, the six, three frame, the, the not flexible, don't have a backswing. There's so much that goes into it. So I think the mental part of the game is just, it starts with knowing your kicker, knowing your long snapper and knowing your, um, your, your punter, because it's, it's, how are we going to, how are we going to get this kid to, um, to, um, want to come here, to want to be here, to want to perform, to want to struggle, to bounce back. So I think, I think to us, that's the mental game. We can't, we, we can't, we can't do it no other way. We're not going to do it. I tell him all the time. I tell my dad, my dad's 84 years old. Love my dad. He was hard on us, but I'll tell you what, he made it up. He made us competitors, but he's one of those guys that I said, and I mess around when I tell him, I said, dad, I'm, we're going to go train some kids, but, um, you know, just sit down, just chill, relax, you know, because <laughs> if I let him go, Dad, he can't say those things nowadays. It's almost like what you said a little while ago. Some of these coaches can't be coaching these million dollar players the same anymore. They're not gonna listen to you. You're gonna they're gonna shut down, they're gonna do all this stuff. So the mental game is all is developed at home. And the 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 way you the way you the way you get it in the sports world is you learn from your mistakes and you correct it. And how do you correct it? We keep we call it here practice. We practice every day to be better, to hit a better ball game. The, the thing I would like to say about kickers, long snappers, every day is not a game guys. So every day is not competition. Okay. It's not a competition. Every single day you compete with yourself and you practice for yourself to become a better player. So when you get in front of your, your, your coach, you perform when you get out there in the game, you perform. So that's the way we take the mental part of the game. And I think another another point um, to that is, I think in a way we kind of welcome struggle. Um, I, I don't, you know, it, it's pretty when you, if you're out, outside one of our sessions, you know, well, it's OK to have a bad day right now at this time of the year for all of our high school kids. We, you know, we do focus so much on the, the form, the technique and the fundamentals that. You know, some kids just ain't where we want them yet, but we're making those adjustments. So in the meantime, it might look a little ugly. We some we tell some of our new kids, you know, it might get ugly before it gets pretty. And you know, that's just part of part of it. Make it doing something new, trying new things. Um, but ultimately, right now we're practicing. But come August, come September, when the lights go on on Friday nights, and you know, that's where you got to be at your at your A game. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I said, I think in a way we kind of welcome the struggle part. We like the struggle part. Sometimes, you know, as coaches, we don't like seeing kids struggle, but at the same time, it's just an opportunity for them to kind of elevate that game um, as they go. So it's an opportunity to grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talking about what Alex is, I don't, I don't think we get, I think the kind of kids that we get, most of them, we get them struggling. I mean, I'm gonna be real honest, but the 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 best part about that is being able to see these guys going to college, being able to see these guys start on a, as a freshman, as a sophomore, or in high school as a senior, or in Pop Warner kick an extra point, their first extra point through the through the um goalpost when they first came to us, they couldn't kick. When I tell you they can kick a ball five feet, five yards, I'm not lying to you, and. That's the kind of kids that we get. And that's the beauty part about it is like Alex said, we're okay with the struggle. We understand you're coming to us to get them fixed, but just know one thing, patience. We gotta be patient. Starting with the parents, we gotta be patient. We gotta be patient. This doesn't happen overnight, okay? This takes time. So I think like, like, like it is, this is, that's, that's what we love. We love it. We don't want a kid that's already ready to go. It's no, you know, it's, it's no, okay. You're just coming in to get reps. We love it. But at the same time, I'll be honest, we don't get a lot of those guys. They develop to those guys. And then that's the, that's the, that's the, the prize for that we get to be able to see them do something that they thought probably couldn't happen, but it's happening for them now. So that's, that's the beauty part about that. That is really cool. And that is, I know that feeling as a coach, seeing a guy that like, you know, maybe he just couldn't get it going. And then you spend time and you, you pour everything into him and he opens up to you or he or she, and then 
they start seeing that success and they're so elated and they can't thank you enough. And you're so proud of them. I want to hit on that a little bit too. You know, it's interesting nowadays with all the, you know, you can do uh, FaceTime sessions and, you know, Zoom sessions of, about getting instruction as a kicker. Um, but how do you guys, I like that you talked about you wanting them to struggle, Alex Jr. And how do you guys uh, keep them interested or coming back? Because every kid now, they want success, right? They want it right away. How do you keep them patient? How do you keep them interested that they don't just say, oh, well, screw it. I'm not seeing success. Let me go try to take the easy route from some other guy who isn't teaching fundamentals and just have some minimal success right now. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, it's it's crazy, but I, I think a lot of the kids appreciate that part um, where, you know, obviously there are kids that just want to kick. There's those kickers are out there that they just want to go anywhere. They don't want to be told what to do. They don't want to, they just want to go kick footballs and you know there there are those kickers out there and you know so be it but you know for the most part I think a lot of the I'll say majority of the guys that we have coming through here you know they they struggle but then they get hooked on it they they get hooked on it I, I think they appreciate the honesty yes. um I, I think they appreciate you know somebody actually telling them what you need to work on not just hey all right we got 50 balls let's kick as many balls as we can until our legs are tired and you know, you guys come back next time. I, th I think they really do appreciate the honesty. Um, if anybody knows us, and I'll tell kids all the time, you can lie to me, but don't lie to yourself, okay? And I know you're lying, but I you can lie to me all you want, but don't lie to yourself because we're going to get better. And to me, I think that, like Alex said, I, I think for some reason, you know, we, we're – God sends us these kids. I want to say it straight out because these those kids need need this place because our place is the only place doing this. And I'll say it straight out. Nobody does. Nobody that I know because in, in the state of Arizona is doing what we do. We really bond with the kids. We really focus on whether it's the one on ones or or three or four or six guys. We really work on no steps on one steps on contact we really work spend the time and the thing to 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 uh, motivate them to encourage them to to or and more importantly they're able to pull one good kick out of the whole session you 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 kick one good kick with me you got potential <laughs> i don't care if it comes in the second session third session you hit me a ball the way I want to hear that ball come off your foot or on that sweet spot, there's potential here. So I think a lot of these kids, sometimes parents will say, well, he can't play football. He can't play this. Maybe he wants to try soccer. I said, well, I don't know who told his parent. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know who told his parent that. No, that's not the way it works, but we're glad you brought him. You brought him to the right place. If, he was gonna, if he's going to learn, he's going to learn here. If he wants to learn, so I think that's what it, I think the part that, like Alex said, there's comes a point where we're a train, we're a, we're a building foundation kind of taking place and building from there on. But then it comes to a point to where kids now, you know, whether it's juniors and seniors, they want to, they, they take off to all these camps, they go try different, they just go, they're all over the place and they're still here coming once in a while there once in a while there once in a while okay you know they they're they just want to go explore their options explore their ways which is fine continue doing it but i think the outcome of the thing some some a very small percentage should be doing that but a big percentage don't need to be doing that because i think i i think there's a lot of i think a lot of the kicking and the specialist things is done it, it's about developing your mechanics once you can develop that and be consistent, then you can go on and be in showcases. Go go land top 10, top five, go get recruited, go get all this stuff. But I just believe that until you get to that point, you have to, you have to take every day like a practice. You have to get better as a, as a practice. So I, I think that's so, I, I mean, going back to the, going back to the um, question that you said, very rare do 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 we lose kids here 
we lose them later on when they're when they're going off, you know, to camps and doing all that. But eventually they'll come back. They come back and get a session in, get a session, which is good. That's good. You know, where we've already developed you. Um, or I should say you have already developed yourself. We were in the process with you guys. You guys did all the work, you know, so we're OK with that. So, I mean, I think it, this is a facility where you can do your strength and conditioning in the off season. This is a facility where you can come in and work on your mechanics. This is a facility that you can come in and get quality reps. This is a, a facility for whatever. Not only that, me and my son, Junior, we have a great relationship with all the kids. And our phones are always open if they have somebody need to ask a question or talk or whatever. So I don't think there's, I mean, I want to, I, I want to say we're there for our guys and yeah. I want to say them feel at home. I mean, so I think that's that that's the that's the beauty part. And, I, and most importantly, we know what we're talking about when it comes to this part. I mean, we we definitely know when, what what we're doing here. So I I I don't see no reason why, you know. But there's those people that will come in once in a while and then go. We got. I, I think this year we've had so many people from out of state, out of town, come and spend the weekends here. Amazing. I love that. Awesome. I love that. that's discipline to me. So, and on their part. So I think that's where we we're, we're why our facility is so good for, for a lot of kids. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely agree. And I was always the type that would say, Hey, you know, go out and work with all different kicking coaches. But I, I do agree with the point that you said senior, where you're talking about, um, you know, go and, and really find your fundamentals, work with one person. And if you're just starting out, like really, get really good at what you do, right? And get your fundamentals down and then start going out and meeting different people and trying new things. But you got to have a, because if you're bouncing around to every different kicking coach, you're going to have so many crisscrossing ideas, right? Um, that it's going to be hard to really focus and get good at something. So I agree with that uh, a lot. Uh, I, I do want to ask you, and again, something that you guys said that makes you so unique is that you build this relationship with your players. I mean, that that's special and that takes a lot of time and that can't be replicated. So no matter what people do, they can't replicate what you guys do. And I think that's awesome. What Matt was, or Mac was talking about was before you guys even have a, a specialist go on the field and start hitting some balls or hitting some warmups, there's a whole talk that takes place. Do you guys know what I'm talking about here? Is that yes, relative? Yeah. So what, what does that consist of? And what are you, I mean, you're, you're giving them the basics of what you guys do. Or is it drills? What are you, what are you guys telling them? Sometimes it's some. Sometimes it's them not doing the right things. <laughs> sometimes it's them, you know, wake them showing up in the morning at uh, forty degrees outside, and them standing around with their with their hands crisscrossing, not stretching out, and not warming up. Sometimes it's them not 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 um, just getting a ball, a pair of sticks, and and a ball, and miss hitting every ball because you're not warming up. So I'll gather them all up together and I'll, I'll get them all on the line and I'll warm them up for 15 minutes when, until they're sweating in a, in a 35 degree weather. And um, I'll get them to the point to where this is what needs to happen. Our first no step ball, our first no step ball that we're hitting is a good ball. It's not taking us. We're not warming up kicking footballs. We're already warmed up before before we start hitting our first ball. So I think a lot of these conversations go on because we see that we see what's going on. So we bring them all in. But like I always tell all the kids, whatever we speak, sometimes it's not for everybody. Everybody take it for what you're hearing. It's either for you or it's not for you. But a lot of times it's to get these guys locked in. So we want them to come out and not just waste that, that, that good day on the field. We believe there's a lot of work that's done inside the facility, and then we're going to take you out there for those that deserve to, that should be out there to go put what you're learning inside, go take it outside. But they already know how we are. We don't like to mess around. Like Alex says, you know, I was taught real young in my age when, when um, you, once you put your cleats on, it's time to go. There's no more messing around. Okay. You can have fun, have all the fun you want, but don't, don't I don't want to see you missing field goals and then having fun and joking around. Then that means you're just wasting somebody's time, wasting your time, not taking this seriously. So a lot of those talks are to get these guys locked in. 
you know, get them locked into the next hour and a half. Sometimes these conversations, we stop the practice <laughs> and we bring them because the practice is getting away from us. It gets away from you because you have one or two guys that are messing around and then everybody's trying to chime, get in the conversation and then they start doing something. We hold a, we hold a, we try to say that we hold a pretty strict um, practice. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And sometimes I'll stop the whole conversation because two guys are talking and I'll say, well, hold on. So-and-so has something to say to everybody. I'll put them on the spot because at the end of the day, I want them to be, I think why I do it is because I want them to be locked in. I want them to take this session seriously and everything that they do, have fun doing it. But we want the we want the final the end result of the day. We want them leaving from here satisfied that they had a great session, great practice. They had a great hit, great um, great experience. So that's I think why we stop some of these conversations and before, middle, and after. I don't have a problem stopping at all. Right. That's there, pretty so. cool too because it, it <clears throat> just from my background, I can tell that's kind of a, a soccer thing. You know what I mean? Where you bring everyone up and you're like, all right shit's getting away from us. You know what I mean? Like, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to work on. I see a lot of similarities there. I love cross coaching. I'm lucky to coach with coach John Baxter, who has been a legend at Fresno state and USC when it comes to special teams, but his favorite thing to do, and especially with kicking too, is comparing things to different sports or taking qualities from different sports. You know, he treats our specialists like pitchers in baseball. And if they're not kicking, you know, just like a pitcher who's not throwing, well, he's helping, he's shagging, he's, you know, servicing others. It's the same thing our specialists do. Um, so I love that you take that component. Junior, is there anything that you add to guys before they even step on the field? Is there something fundamental that you tell them? You know, what's your what's your take? No, I think uh, so. I mean, like I kind of mentioned earlier, we're able to see guys two, three times a week. So in the facility, you know, we're really able to kind of break things down piece by piece, really get the momentum, get the get everything kind of locked in. So when we go out to a field, you know, the main reason to getting them together at the beginning is to kind of let them know our expectations. Like we're doing all this stuff during the week. Now is your time to go out there and, you know, put it all together. You know, we always preach your swing is your swing. It's an extra point. If it's a 50 yard field goal, it's your same swing. If you're inside the facility, your swing is the same swing you're going to be taking outside. So I think at the beginning of practice, I mean, I think it's, like I said, I think we have a pretty good structure of what we want to accomplish during the day. I mean, we do deal with, you know, <laughs> high school teenagers. So, you know, sometimes the focus and the, the attention isn't already always there. Um, so in the facility, you know, we see these guys a couple of times a week. So, you know, dealing with high school athletes, sometimes the focus isn't always, always there. Um, so at the beginning, it's good to kind of get them together, kind of let them know what our expectations are. You know, the mid practices conversation, that's always going to come from senior. He, he has a pretty good eye, so he'll bring them in pretty quick and he'll let them know um, when things are kind of going, going the opposite way. Um, and then at the end of practice, I know I always think it's a good opportunity for us to kind of, you know, I, I guess in in a way we'll give them feedback and we'll kind of go individually throughout the group and, you know, kind of let them know, hey, you know what, today you had a good day. Today we had one kid out there today with us for the first time and he had an amazing day. <laughs> so, you know, give him props for that in front of everybody. Now we've had guys that were with us two or three years that had an okay day. We'll let them know they had an okay day in front of everybody. So kind of just holding everybody accountable to, you know, their performance and, you know, again, just being honest with them. Um, we're not going to go out there and, you know, if there was three or four guys that didn't have the day we wanted, I think that's our time to let them know, even though they already know it's not the day they wanted, but it's, it's just, it's just that opportunity for us to give them that feedback and that, you know, that honest feedback. Yeah. hundred percent. I think just like you said, that's what guys appreciate and that's what they'll come back for is just good teachers, you know, giving that feedback. All right. So now we got to a, <clears throat> a rapid fire section brought to you by the kickers bible are you guys okay with doing a rapid fire section yeah all right so what i'll do is i'll throw you guys some questions and whoever wants to answer go ahead um but it can't be you know super long it's it's a few words or a sentence all right gotta keep it short i know seniors this is gonna be tough for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm out of this question. I think I'm out of this. This is all Alex now. That, 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 was, that, was, that was a long 
with the senior. Oh, no, man. senior, you're, you're feel free to to answer it, man. But any, hey, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you guys. No. All right, so so tell me from your guys' perspective. Uh, remember, this is rapid fire now. What is the most important fundamental for kickers? Mental, mental preparation, contact. Oh, okay. Real quick, tell me uh, a few bits about mental preparation. What's your favorite way to help guys get mentally prepared? Being able to bounce back from a missed kick. Being and, able to bounce back. And you're always contact. Why contact? Contact's gonna put the ball where it needs to be. But the, my my men, my number one mental thing is you're always gonna miss. You're always gonna miss a field goal. It's, it's the second one. It's always about the second kick. You'll lose your job on the second one, not the mm. first one. Hey, okay, good. Love that. Now, I want both of you guys to answer this because this is good. It can be a little bit more longer. You guys saw Brett Merritt this year, right? Cowboys kicker in the playoffs. Missed four, what was it, extra points and field goals in one game. Have you guys ever had a situation with a kicker like that? And what did you tell him before he went back out there again? I, I kind of had a uh, close thing myself. Um, going through something like that. And, you know, like I said, the hardest looking back, what I would have told myself is to shake it off and go back to the basics. I mean, that's just trust your, trust yourself, trust your swing and get back to just going out there. Get over it. Get over it. You get, you're going to get another opportunity. You mm -hmm. got the second coming. Flush. Get over it. Not that, it's already done. We got another one. We got to get ready for the next one. I love it. It's what is your guys' take on big ranking camps? You guys have known all the Coles and the Sailors and all those camps. What's your guys' thoughts on those? I, I think it's good for guys that are ready. I think maybe 10% of kickers out there are probably ready for those camps, so go and do them. But the other 90%, I think the the work has to be done with the basics and the fundamentals. Huge. If you're, if you're, at, if you're at the best of your kicking ability, man, go do all those camps, man. Go land in the top 10, not the 150 and um go perform but i mean to me like alex said 80 percent of the kids that are out there man are are not ready for those um come back home with the one out of ten two out of ten four out of ten go ten out of ten nine out of ten i mean go get ranked go go be a five star i mean that's what it is i mean a three star what got more practice to do we yeah. got more practice and there's no question you guys have hit on it uh, you guys have this amazing facility, which has a weight room and a field that you guys host workouts at, at your facility. What is your favorite um, workout, for example, for like a snapper or any specialist that, that needs to work on their explosiveness? What do you have them do? I like a lot of plyos. Um, so we do a lot of jumping. I mean, sprinting, you can never go wrong with sprinting. Sprinting, jumping, lifting, we keep it pretty simple here um but i think the simple the simple things done well and with the purpose i think those go a long way in the weight room uh, you know we're not trying to create power lifters or anything but in the weight room you're kind of you're creating the the base and the strength and the speed and then the kicking makes you a good kicker the kicking makes or the punting makes you a good punter the snapping makes you a good a good snapper but the the weight room part is a weight room part that's for your speed, your strength, but the the technical part, the kicking and all that, that's what's really going to be that that separating thing. But plyos, sprints, um, you know, a couple of strength stuff, a couple of speed stuff. We, we you know, what's, your, what's your favorite uh, sprint or speed training thing to do with them? So we have a treadmill here. We do push sprints. So treadmill's off, you're leaning forward and you're pushing that belt. Um, so the machine's not running, you're right there, you're just grinding. They're tough. They're brutal. I have a kick, I have a kicking drill and a snapping drill that it's a fast drill. It's five balls. It's five balls. You get your first step on the first, you get your first steps on the first one. Put a, I'm going to put a piece of tape on your, on your spot. I'm going to put a ball hike. You're going to, you're going to hit your ball. You're going to back pedal to that spot, hit your ball, back pedal to that spot, five balls, snapping ball. I don't want them to think I want them to, I want them to position themselves less thinking more hitting a great ball snapping same thing i'll get five balls next to them and i'll let them snap the ball to their to their holder i'll put a ball right as soon as he's done snap it no thinking effort just go 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 
right here, eliminate this part right here. I love it. I love it. And, and you know what? There's a lot of guys I've worked with in the past where I'm like, man, how do we get these guys out of their head? That's the answer. That's it. You just got to get them out, get away from that. Um, it's, it's not, it's not, we, we don't got time to sit there for 15 seconds. And, you know, another thing I want to say, sometimes kicking off a of sticks is, is not good. It's not good. It keeps you just thinking it's a ball in a placement that's really not going to be there. You know, so yes, you know, we, we kind of do that, like simulate the snap and then the hold on the thing. We let them warm up with sticks, but at the same time, you know, when you're, if you're going to go sticks, you got to take your steps. You got to take a deep, deep breath and go. The last thing I want you to do is sitting there for 15 seconds, looking at that ball and then going, that's too long. You probably should sit for two, three seconds and you should already hit that, go through that ball if you're going to use sticks. Nice. So eliminating all the things that are kind of putting yourself in that situation. You can do live reps with sticks, but you just got to simulate your mind to do that. You can't sit there and walk, look, stare at that ball for five seconds. That's too long. No 10 question. seconds. No question. So a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, I love that. All right. I want both of you guys to answer this. Uh, what is the secret to consistency? What's the secret? Practice. <laughs> I believe practice. I believe showing up. I mean, consistency starts with work. Work means starts with showing up, getting your rep, whatever you got to do in practice. And, you know, I say consistency is life. What do you got? What do we got to do in our marriages and our jobs? We got to be, we got to show up and then we got to do the work, whatever works there that we have to do that's that that's that's what it is whether whether you're working on contact whether you're working on your snaps your hold your drops it's work so con being consistent being consistent and that starts with showing up discipline be disciplined about sacrifice i can you know so to me that's what that yeah we'll give we'll give a lot of the kids props just for showing up to our practices on saturdays you know we, we, tell, we tell them you know you show up you got you got better just by showing up you got one percent better just by showing up now that you're here all right let's get to work let's get the reps there was a kid today that wanted 10 percent. he says coach i think i deserve 10 percent to that I says no we one percent every day imagine what one percent every day does we That's can't right. do 10 a day and then the next five days we don't even get one percent so we preach a lot, one percent every day. We're gonna be. We we do it too. As a, I do it as a coach, as a as a hu husband, as a owner, as a whatever. I I try to be better one percent every day. Imagine at the end of the year, I'm just getting better. So that's the way we think, and that's the mindset that we tell these kids. And whether they're listening or they're not listening, you know what? Hopefully, one person's gonna listen. So that person's gonna benefit. That's the beauty part about this. Um, about the coaching. That's the beauty part about life. You know, yeah. we've been given beauty this beautiful life now it's just up to us what we want to do with it so that's the blessing that we have man yeah that's really well said I, I think you guys sound like true teachers and i know that the best coaches are great teachers so that's really cool my last question for you guys and i'm sure senior you've got a lot of these so my, maybe <laughs> down to two or three what is your what is your favorite proverb right or coachism you know the coaches sayings every good old coach man they got some good coaches sayings that you say to your guys over and over again what do you guys got for me i think one one of the good ones we used to have in the facility was you know failure is temporary quitting lasts forever i, I think that was one of the cool ones that i you know it's kind of stuck in my head where you know we're gonna fail it's, it's part of especially in, in our in our kicking world we're gonna miss field goals it's not failing but we're gonna miss we're gonna make um but you know, if you see, you miss a ball and you say, you know what, I'm done kicking just because of that one miss, then you know you didn't really love it at the beginning. So I think that's one that's kind of really stuck with me, um, and it, I think it's 100 percent true too. It's okay to fail, it's okay to struggle, but if you quit, then you know that's, I, I guess that's the not okay part. I I, I agree with Alex. And hey. I'm gonna keep it simple, hey. but that's I'm unheard of. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> As a first, this is recorded too, right? I, I, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna keep it simple. I agree with Alex, but you know, of all the kids, if all the kids have, have, um, had got to know me a lot and what they expect, and they expect me to say a lot of to them, you know, and I'm gonna say it is, it's, it's that one percent. Let's just get one percent better every day. And I, I, I tell them not just in 
sports or kicking in life. I tell them, let's get 1% better in school. In, in school, Let's get 1% better with your families, with your mom, your pop. Let's get better 1% better in whatever you do in life. And I think that's what I've like bought into. And, you know, by no means, I, 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 I strive for that. I, I want to, I, I want to get, you know, 1% better every single day. So I think for me, it's, it's, it's that it's a, that that's, what's real ties in real good with the kids that we have, that we bring in here a lot, you know? So yeah, it, I kept it simple. <laughs> that's, that's wild. But no, those are also two really good answers, man. I do love hearing that. Cause it's like you build up a library, you know, and I'm sure you guys have tons of others. You tell your guys, but I think that's really awesome. Well, man, it's been awesome having you guys on, just getting to know you and, and talk kicking. I mean, this is why I do it to connect with great guys like you. So appreciate you coming on. Do you guys have anything to plug? You got any events coming on? I know you guys have trainings all the time, people coming in town. What do you guys got? So, so we got a couple of events coming up. We're actually doing our Arizona camp next weekend. Kind of trying to expand a little bit here. We're going to Las Vegas. We'll kind of be teaming up with uh, Sin City kicking out there. And then we'll be out in California. Um, we got so many ties out in California, but, you know, somebody that we've really got to know well and kind of connect with the Joey Cejudo out there with Next Level Kicking. So, you know, really cool guys. We love surrounding ourselves with, you know, like-minded people, um, people that are kind of on the same same mission with the same goals. Um, so anytime we, we're, as we try to expand, you know, we're always trying to do it with the right people. And, you know, thank you for having us on this show. And, you know, it's another new connection and, you know, we appreciate it. And we're doing an event on the, we're, we're trying to gear up for an event at the, with the and profession, the Arizona Rattlers inside their, their state, inside the Phoenix Suns arena there before their game. So that's a big thing that we're, we're, we want to do it for the kids. We want to see the kids, not only if you ever seen a Rattler game or a arena game, but more likely be able to kick in that stadium and in the, through those goalposts, so we did it a while back, and we're gonna we're we're gearing up to hopefully do it again in the, in the next couple of months. So that's gonna be a a big opportunity for a lot of these kids to be able to say, you know what, I kicked the field goal through that through those uprights, or so I think for us it's 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 always about it's first always about first God, and then it's always about the kids. It's all you know we want to we want to put we want to put kids where where they probably imagined or never imagined to be. So I think that's important for us at the end of the day. Um, and we just keep moving forward, regardless of it's one guy or a hundred kids, two guys that the numbers really doesn't matter to us. You know, so we're, we're all about, we're, that, that's what we're all about. We're all, we, we want, we love to see the outcome of a lot of these kids and stuff. So that's what makes, that's what brings joy to us. And that's why we continue doing a, a what we're doing. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's definitely, you guys got a great mission. I know there's always a, a lot of great specialists that come out of Arizona. So I'm excited to make that connection with you guys and you guys send us some ballers out, out there and, and uh, you know, we'll get some, some good players coming in here. Um, is there, there's one short brief piece of advice you guys have for any kids out there. What would you say? Oh, if I can tell you guys one advice is, um, you know, understand what you need to work on i mean get what you're get get locked in once you get locked in you know it's to me to me it's all about it's all about as a as a as an athlete you have to you have to be able to sacrifice some things you got to be disciplined you got to if, if it's something that you really truly want to do kicking is one of those things that you can't just do once in a while it's become a sport that you have to take it just like any other position so i think if i can tell any kids get locked in and whatever you want to do if it's kicking being a quarterback whatever life just get locked in and go all out i mean if i can tell anybody to me it's never about it's sports isn't everything okay that's just the that's the piece of the pie that's the beauty part that we are able to do it. So if you're gifted and talented to be able to do it and continue doing it, do it. But I think more than anything is the life lessons that you learn through sports. That's what it is to me. Sports will lead you through the for the rest of your life. And that's the beauty part about sports is that it's going to guide you through every scenario of life. 
And if that if I can leave them with anything, that's what it is. That's the beauty part. Be part of a sports team or a, it doesn't matter what it is, soccer, anything, because it's going to teach you life lessons. So I think that's my last thing. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, now I think as a society, we're so caught up on comparing. You know, people want to compare their themselves to somebody else. But, but I think the biggest thing is understanding it's you. It's your journey. You know, so-and-so is going to have, you know, a, a certain recruiting process that's going to be fit for him. Somebody else is going to have a different recruiting process. Somebody's going to start on varsity four years. Somebody's going to start on varsity one year. So everybody's going to have a different path. It's easy to compare. It's easy to say, well, you know what? This guy's getting this. This guy's getting that. This guy's getting this. But I think the the main thing is you just focusing on you, giving giving your best, showing up every day, getting that 1% better every day, just looking in the mirror and being honest with yourself as far as, you know what? Did I do everything in my control? to be where I want to be. So. All right. Where's your, where, where can they, these guys find you? Where's uh, social media? Where can they find you? So the azkicking.com is our website. And then AZ kicking and training on Instagram, AZ kicking on Twitter. Um, and for some of the parents, AZ kicking on Facebook. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. That's been Alex and Z- Zendejas, senior and junior. Appreciate you guys. A word from our sponsors. This show is brought to you by The Kicker's Bible. The Kicker's Bible. Ever wondered about how many kicks you should do during practice after pulling your quad multiple times? Repeatedly snapping the ball over your punter's head? Keep getting dumped by all your girlfriends for missing kicks? Well, we can't help with all those things. But for some of those, there's The Kicker's Bible. Proven training methods and secrets used by NFL specialists. Written by yours truly, Brett Arkellian. With over 20 NFL specialist accounts, including personal excerpts from record-setting and Hall of Fame specialists, David Akers and Shane Graham. If you are interested in any of these fantastic tips and excerpts discussed in this episode, visit IcemanKicking.com or go to my Twitter bio, Iceman underscore kicking. Occupied by a sarcastic friend.